climate of Hawara. Welcome back. I'm Lex Levy, and this is Ancient Odysseys. Join me in my adventures as I explore and investigate the mysteries of ancient sites across the world. In today's episode, I will take you with us on our expedition to the Pyramid of Hawara, where we search for the legendary lost labyrinth with our boots on the ground research and footage. Ever since I read the histories by the great Greek historian Herodotus, I've been fascinated with Hawara, and it has been a dream of mine to explore this site in person. So I'm extremely excited to share our adventure with you. Now let's go. Let's take a trip to the Pyramid of Hawara. Located in the Fayum Oasis, and I will show you our route of our expedition. This is the Pyramid of Hawara. What you see now is its mud brick core, which was once cased with limestone. It is conventionally believed that this pyramid is attributed to Amenemhat III, a 12th dynasty king, who first built the Black Pyramid in Dashur. And these Middle Kingdom pyramids differ in construction to the Old Kingdom pyramids in that they have southern entrances. The labyrinth is believed to lie here at the south, bisected by this canal, which is thought to contribute to the inundation of the passages, making them presently inaccessible. We began our expedition on the east, where we observed the different geologies found at the site. Then we traversed south, and we were fortunate in that the gate was open to the southern entrance, and we were able to enter into the flooded pyramid at least several meters. Then we walked over the labyrinth and alongside the canal, and we observed a cartouche that a local said was Amenemhat the Thirds. We peered over the canal to the other side of the lost labyrinth. And it appears that there is an entrance into the structure here. Next, we walked alongside the western face of the pyramid and then to the north, where a local pointed out the northern passage. And then it was off to our next adventure, the Palace of Gold, Qasr al Saga. legendary labyrinth that Herodotus wrote about is right this way. Follow me, let's go explore. Now I'm standing in a display of the different geologies that were found on site. Here is a bust made of calcite. granite pillar. Here you can see an inclusion of flint here. search of the legendary labyrinth. Oh. <laughs>
red quartzite. in front of the legendary labyrinth that the Greek historian Herodotus wrote about. He said that the vastness was greater than all the Greek temples combined and that of the pyramid. And you can see all of these mounds are where people have tried to excavate to locate this discusses the labyrinth in his book two of his histories, and he wrote that the structure surpassed even the greatness of the Egyptian pyramids. He further explains that, moreover, they decided to preserve the memory of their names by a common memorial. So they built a labyrinth, a little ways beyond Lake Morris, near a place called the City of the Crocodiles. I have seen it myself, and indeed words cannot describe it. If one were to collect the walls and the evidence of all the other efforts of the Greeks, the sum would not amount to the labor and the cost of the labyrinth. Though the pyramids beggar description, and each one of them is a match for many great monuments built by the Greeks, this maze surpasses even the pyramids. It has 12 roofed courts with doors facing each other, six north and six south, in two continuous lines all within one outer wall. There are also double sets of chambers, 3,000 altogether, 1,500 above and the same number underground. We ourselves view those that are above ground and speak of what we have seen, but we learn through conversation about the underground chambers. The Egyptian caretakers would by no means show them, as they were, they said, the burial vaults of the kings who first built the labyrinth and of the sacred crocodiles Thus, we can only speak from hearsay of the lower chambers. We have seen the uppers for ourselves, and they are creations of a greater human. Herodotus goes on further, stating that the exits of the chambers and the mazy passages hither and thither through the courts were an unending marvel to us as we passed from court to apartment, and from apartment to colonnade, from colonnades again to more chambers, and then into yet more courts. And over all of this is a roof made of stone like the walls. And the walls are covered with cut figures. And every court is set around with pillars of white stone, very precisely fitted together. Near the corner where the labyrinth ends, stands a pyramid, 240 feet tall, on which great figures are cut. And a passage to this has been made underground. Petri would state on his findings that, how far then, Will the remains at Hawara agree with the descriptions of the magnitude and importance of the labyrinth? We read of the enormous extent of the buildings, and of their exceeding and vastness of all the temples of the Greeks put together, and that they even surpassed the pyramids. Of the beauty and magnificence of the work we cannot now judge, as almost every stone has long since been broken up and removed, but the extent of the area we can measure is marked up by the immense bedded chips of fine white limestone which lies on the south of the pyramid. Wherever we dig down, we find a bed of flat laid sand or a beton made of chips of stone rammed down on which to lay the pavement and walls of some enormous building. And over that lie thousands of tons of fragments of the destroyed walls. On tracing these signs to their limits, it is found that they cover an area of about a thousand feet long and 800 feet broad. These mere figures will not signify readily to the mind the vast extent of construction, but when we compare it with the greatest of the other Egyptian temples, it may somewhat be realized. In 
In 2008, a Belgian and Egyptian expedition team called the Mataha Project scanned the labyrinth at Hawara. And this is an image of the anomalies they found under the sand. It appears that what Pedri found and reported was actually the foundation or roof of the labyrinth. And there is still so much more to be excavated. One of those bricks, you can see up there, probably weighs close to 10 kilos. So the mud brick exterior might not look like much. Again, so here's an example of one of these mud bricks. And I mean, so, so I can't, I can't pick that thing up with one hand. And you can see the block right here. I would have to get two hands. I'm also trying to film and hold, hold a GoPro and a cigar at the same time. But those things are super dense and extremely heavy. Of red granite, and we're going to descend as far as possible down. The exploration of the Pyramid of Hawara is incredibly scant, and basically, Petri's report on the structure is the primary resource. He began his excavations in 1888 from the north, and you can see its passage highlighted here in yellow. This is Petri's diagram of the internal layout of the Pyramid of Hawar. And here is the southern entrance, and you can see the water level as it was when Petri entered the pyramid. And here's a diagram of the well chamber or super chamber, and you can see the water level as Petri would have found it. This is approximately the water level today. Here is an excellent diagram by Keith Hamilton of the internal layout of the Pyramid of Hawara. Here is a fantastic 3D rendering of the internal layout. And you can see the circuitous passages here and three trap doors and the chevrons. Let's go. Will not be very far. Because as we get down to the bottom of this thing here, you can see it is completely filled with mud and water. The interior components of this structure are completely inundated. Shout out to my wife, Alexa, from Ancient Odysseys, who's right here looking absolutely beautiful as always. Babe. <laughs> and she pointed out that the... I hesitate to call these stairs because they, they aren't the stairs that are walking. Ratchet, right? It's not stuff. Similar to what we see at the Lost pyramid in Dashur. So, unfortunately there's not much you can see on the inside of this pyramid.
know she is absolutely dying to just go dig through all these holes. And <laughs> I want to dig so badly. So you can kind of get a sense of what this construction may have possibly been. to the other side of the temple oh. across the river. It cuts right through the labyrinth. Can we get over there? Just remember that this in this entire area is it overheating? Underground 
beautiful structure, a labyrinth, a huge maze temple complex that is buried underneath all of the sand, so multiple levels. Possibly up to 3,000 chambers. Do the calculation. We knew the volume. A lot of bricks. Another passage? Dr. Burat. The water and the clothes. Yes, oh, yes. I see. When was the last time someone's been in there? I didn't know there was a secondary opening.
I mean, I'm tiny, but I'm not that tiny. Let's <laughs> pick it up. You're heavy. How many? Come, Hannah. Come, it's here. Come, it's here. It's here. Yeah. I think that's one million. Katam? Katir. Katir. One, one million. One million. Yes. Katir, Katir. One million. Yeah. Uh, ten million. Ten million. Yes. Look at that. Does that look familiar? Sure does. It's interesting. Pyramids. I see. Shark run. It does look like it's an intentional part of the construction. He says the two sides of the brain. Does it even go back here? Huh? Does it even go back here? So I'm not sure, but anyway, obviously <laughs> they've made little all of those piles of sand where somebody's dug a hole and moved the sand out and piled it up somewhere. I mean, you can see this pile right here is all fragments of pottery. It's all kind of stuff that's buried out here. This concludes our expedition to the Pyramid of Obara. The labyrinth exists, folks, and what spectacular treasures lay hidden beneath the sand. It's certainly fun to imagine. Let us hope for future excavation approvals and efforts from the Ministry of Antiquities. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, and stay tuned for more epic adventures in ancient odysseys. Never stop exploring. If you want to help support our adventures, please like, share, subscribe, and pick up some badass Ancient Odysseys merch. The link is in the video description below. Also, please subscribe to our two new channels, Egyptian Trash Cats, where we document our saga in caring for the street cats of Egypt, and Egypt Eats, for all of our crazy culinary adventures. Thank you all very much.